Hey everyone, I'm going to show you uh, today how to use Google Forms quizzes, um, specifically on how, how you can use it to grade quizzes very easily for a, a group of students. So first of all, um, this is a test that I gave my Spanish students. I've got three classes of, uh, for eighth grade Spanish, and there's about 30 kids in each class. And um, you can see um, the way that I prefer to give it, I've created a, a separate class for the students um, whenever I'm giving a test or a quiz because I want all of the kids to take it um, on, this, on the exact same form, which will allow me to respond to all of them at the same time. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. And as, as of right now, for, at least from my experience, Google, um, it doesn't work. For some reason, it doesn't work as well if I assign this uh, Google form to the kids in three different classes. It works better if I created one class and assigned it to them. I'll show you why I do that in just a second. But here's my test. You can see that I always ask for their full ID first. I always require in the settings, I always require uh, their email address or collect the email or restrict it to Illinois uh, Indian Prairie School District users. Um, I don't want them to edit after submit. The presentation, I shuffle the order. You can do that. You don't have to. And then for quiz, um, I make it a quiz and I release it immediately after submission. But in this case, I don't want them to see the answers or their values yet. Um, I don't want them actually see it yet because i there's several kids who haven't maybe haven't taken the quiz yet. So all my students have taken the test. Now I'm ready to check their responses and actually grade them. So I go to responses. You notice you have the ability to turn off. I always make sure I turn off uh, accepting responses once the students are done taking the test. I don't want a kid that maybe was absent to be able to go in here and take it at home or something like that. I, because I may not have caught that if they did that. So I always turn it off. It gives me more control over who's taking it and when. Um, and then you'll also uh, notice that when I go to these responses, I can see three different um, tabs, a summary tab. If I click on that, that shows you um, your average score for all your students, the median score and the range. It also shows you individual, the kids, the frequently missed questions. Um, it shows you um, each question, if you want to scroll down and show you the percentage of kids that answered the different things on the different questions. So it's a really good way. Sometimes it's good to actually go over this with the students as a class and say, hey, let's take a look at the test. And you'll actually go over and say, oh, look at most of you got this right. But this one was really tough for a lot of you. And you can talk about why it was, etc. So now on to my favorite part of Google, which they've just created. They've just allowed you to be able to do this. Um, you obviously can create true or, or a multiple choice questions and it'll automatically just grade the ones that are right and wrong. You can add feedback response based upon the answers that the kids have chosen. So for example, um, let's go to one that's not true, false. Notice I'm scrolling through the different questions. So here's um, a, a problem that has four choices, a multiple choice question with four. And you'll notice that quite a few people responded with this answer right here, frijoles. And so what, what I could do is I can add feedback if I would like, and it would only go that this feedback I type in here would only go to, the, to those 26 kids that answered with this incorrect answer. So it's really nice. You can target your feedback, your responses to kids. It's a really, it's a really nice uh, thing to be able to do. Um, also, um, you'll notice that now Google it, it forms or, or quizzes, I should say, allows you now to um, collect short answer responses. And when you collect short answer responses, you can identify which answers will be correct in that. So here's an example. Um, this question was actually a, um, you can see the answer key. Those are the two correct answers that I've typed in. I could type in as many correct answers as I want or uh, uh, acceptable. I should say is I could type in as many acceptable answers as I want. So here's the question. There's a blank there. The kids were instructed to fill in the, uh, the verb conjugated correctly. That would go in the blank. And so, um, automatically it will grade. This was, I made this worth two points. It will automatically 
give the students that had one of these two answers two out of two points. I don't have to mess with those 61 kids that responded. And then I can actually 62 kids because one kid responded with a capital A. Then I can go through manually as I've done here and I can grade based upon um, the, the answer that the kid wrote. This was correctly stem changed here. There's a couple things you have to do for this verb. At the, their stem change was correct, but the ending was incorrect, and five people did that. And so I gave those kids one point. And I can put uh, an, feedback for those five students and say, um, don't forget to conjugate. Don't forget to conjugate correctly. And students should know what that means because I talk to them all the time about conjugation and so forth. And you can see I can go through and I can I can I can grade each uh, kid's response or each group of kids' responses. Now a lot of times you'll get unique responses. You know, one kid only one kid wrote this, and so you decide if you want. <coughs> excuse me, if you decide if you want to give partial credit for different things or not. Um, there's sometimes there's typos. People just accidentally. Uh, switch the M and the L there. You can decide what you want to give. You can create a rubric if you'd like. You could even copy and paste feedback into these different feedback uh, spots here. Um, and then when you're done with that, you just click save and it will save that particular grade or that particular question. Now you'll notice that if I've got, let's say, 50 questions on a quiz and I've got quite a few that are like this, you're going to have to manually go through and grade every one of theirs. But the positive thing is, is it groups them together. So you can see 61 people got it right. I don't even have to mess with those. I can add feedback if I want. Great job. I don't find that necessary. I only add the feedback when it's constructive criticism that I need to give for kids that are doing something wrong. You'll also notice that the reason that this one answer has two different, there's four responses here and one response here. It's because I've already graded this one and there were kids that weren't here for the day that I gave the test. And so if they answered the same thing, the good thing is I can see, oh, I forgot to, uh, or one of the students that took the test late um, answered the same thing. And you can be consistent with the grades that you're giving. You remember that you gave them one point on uh, the kids that did that. You gave them one point. So you go ahead and click that and give them one point as well. Same with here one point for that student. You can scroll through. It really saves a lot of time. It's a great resource, a great tool, and it gives those students the feedback um, when you're ready to send that feedback to everybody. Um, it will send that feedback individually to all the kids, and they can go through every one of the questions on the quiz and find out the comments or the grade that they got, partial credit perhaps, um, based upon what you've done. So I find it to be a very good tool um, I suggest that you use it. Again, this is Google Forms using the quizzes option and using now the um, short answer option with uh, answer key and feedback through the responses tab. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me.